Thank you, Mr. McManus, Mr. Welch. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked to speak on why nuclear power should be defended. Straight off, I'll give the two perhaps most important reasons about which I will not talk too much. Economy and defense. The economy, the world's greatest economy, the greatest that's ever been known to human history, the American economy, runs on a capacity of roughly 500,000 megawatts. It is not the kind of capacity that can be produced by sunbeams, summer breezes, fumaroles, and chicken manure. <laughs> Secondly, defense. Defense is not decided by weapons alone. Even if weapon after weapon were not scuttled, neutron bomb, B-1, cruise missile, MX, even if those weapons were not scuttled, in the long run, what backs up the defense of a country is a strong economy. There is no economy without energy. And in recent months, this has become painfully evident by looking at what Soviet foreign energy policy is. We know from the testimony of academician Sakharov that since 1955, the Soviet energy policy was to interdict the routes of energy to the West and to the United States. And even if we hadn't known it from him, it was obvious by watching the points in Africa, in the Indian Ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean, in the Middle East, how they use energy to make trouble. That policy has now become more aggressive because the indications are that this is no longer enough for the Soviets, that they will eventually go for the Middle East oil itself. By all indications, such as the fact that they are running out of energy themselves, that they've already warned the colonies of their empire that they cannot supply it. If you look at the uh, uh, brigade in Cuba, the one where Jimmy Carter said, get out, get out immediately or else, or else, or else nothing. <laughs> if you look at it, it is being trained in armored warfare, which does not make sense in Africa, in Ethiopia, in Angola, anywhere else. It makes plenty of sense in South Yemen, in the Arabian desert. For anybody who was still in doubt, Afghanistan provided a further clue, this time ostensibly even waking up Jimmy Carter, who until that time must have believed that the Soviet Politburo is a club of retired Sunday school teachers. <laughs> I will not speak about these two points. I will want to get to the technical points. And one of the reasons is that these are points that do not make much headway when you talk to people who have been brainwashed into believing all kinds of fairy tales about nuclear power. They will say, never mind the Russians. I would rather have the Russians than give birth to a child with two heads, that's what comes from radioactivity and so on. So let me get to the technical points, why nuclear power should be defended. There are again some samples about which I will not say much. Nuclear power is economic. You can see that from the fact that even though most of the expense goes for fighting the cooks now, for the delays, 
for the interest payments, millions every month for a single plant, as uh, uh, Governor Thompson can surely confirm from New Hampshire. In spite of this, nuclear power is still competitive with coal and way below the price of oil. Nuclear power should be defended because it's reliable. In spite of all the propaganda, in spite of all the publicity that little trivial faults get, the fact remains that 10.6% of the total capacity of the United States, nuclear capacity, pulls almost 13% of the load. And as any farmer knows, if he has 10% of his horses pulling 13% of the load, he's got some darn good ho horses. Nuclear power should be defended because it is an almost or virtually unlimited domestic source of energy. If nuclear fuel is bred and the plutonium breeder is not the only possibility, if nuclear fuel is bred into either plutonium or from thorium into uranium-233, the supply is enough to see America's electricity demands as they exist now to beyond the next ice age, even if fusion does not materialize. But I come to the point why nuclear power should be defended, which I find makes people most responsive. It is a simple question of morality. Nuclear power is dangerous like all power is dangerous. There is no way you can handle thousands of megawatts and guarantee that nothing will ever happen, not as long as man remains fallible. But nuclear power is safer than any other source of electricity yet invented. Why is this a moral point? Because everybody accepts electricity. We all use electric light, we are using it now. And the fact is, that electricity cannot be produced without paying a price in human suffering, whether it is deaths or diseases or injuries or even environmental impact. And the lowest price in human suffering is nuclear power, and I don't mean by a few percent, I mean by factors of tens and hundreds. Nuclear power saves lives. There are 52 dead that have been brushed under the carpet in the Three Mile Island incident. Those 52 people died in producing the substitute power for one year because Three Mile Island Reactor 2 is down. The substitute power has to come from less safe sources. If you prorate it, for the capacity, somewhere 52 people have died. They are being brushed under the carpet while people f philosophize about one millirem, which is barely detectable. Now, sometimes people think when I say that, that nuclear power is safer than anything else, that I mean that the probability of an accident is much smaller. Well, that is true, but that is not what I mean. I mean nuclear power is safer even in the improbable event that an accident should happen. It is safer because it's inconceivable that it could lead to such catastrophes as hydropower, where you can have as many as 100,000 fatalities within a few minutes and where you did have 2,000 fatalities in Italy in 1963 when there was a dam failure. It is inconceivable that it could cause casualties as coal-fired power
caused in London in 1952 when 4,000 people died prematurely within a week of an air pollution ep episode. It is inconceivable that as many people could die in a nuclear accident as could die if a tank farm in the east caught fire or if one of the LNG tankers docking in something like three miles from downtown Boston should explode. Each of them carries the total energy of two hydrogen bombs. Now, I'm not saying this to knock the other sources, because there is one health hazards greater one health hazard greater than coal, which is uh, by and large the worst of them all, and that is no coal. If you have insufficient energy, then just take a look into past history or take a look into other countries to see how energy is correlated not only with GNP, but with longevity, with infant mortality, with education, and so on. If you look at these figures, you will see that even coal saves more lives than it takes. But coal, in producing electricity only, takes 37,000 lives a year in America only. Why? Why is it that nuclear power is so much safer? Because man's history in energy is a history of concentrating the energy into greater and greater densities. The so-called alternative sources that we are asked to take up now, solar, wind, and so on, were abandoned for very good reasons in the 17th and 18th centuries. Since then, man has gone to wood, from wood to coal, from coal to oil, from oil to nuclear fuel. Nuclear fuel is so concentrated that you can not only guard against its dangers, which exist only in a few cubic yards of space, and in only one type there is escape of radioactivity. The danger is so concentrated that you can not only easily guard against it, but that you can surround it with a multi-layered defense in depth, which you cannot do with any other source because it's not sufficiently concentrated. Let me give you two examples in providing a 1,000 megawatt plant with fuel. If it's coal-fired, you need 38,000 rail cars of coal per year, each of 100 tons of coal. Well, you can't shove that much coal around the country without hurting somebody, and you do. Between 50 and 100 Americans die just in transporting coal from mine to power plant. Members of the public not miners who had the choice of becoming shepherds instead, members of the public. Compare this with the same capacity of a nuclear plant, which is refueled once a year by something like six automobile trucks. Nobody gets hurt that way. That is one example. 